There was nobody who made me feel like you do. And now I know, now I know. Make it simple. All you gotta do is say when. You make it simple. Simmons, and we are here live at the Arts Garage in Philadelphia with Cheryl, who actually has a CD and a, a release party on June 2nd. And so we're going to spend a little bit of time talking to Cheryl about her musical background and how we got here today. Um, so Cheryl, um, tell us, what kind of artist are you? How would you classify your music? I would put myself in the uh, soul R&B category. Mm -hmm. The CD that I actually um, recorded is a combination of both. Uh huh. Would you say a little neo soul? Maybe? More of a more of a neo soul feel to a lot of the tracks. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. Now you. This is your first. Um, this is your debut solo album. Yes. Um. So you took a little detour before getting here to being a recording artist. Tell us a little bit about your detour in life before we got here. I uh, went to grad school in Cleveland, Ohio, um, still kind of stayed on the path of music, but kept the career going as well, moved mm -hmm. to New York City, um, stayed there for about five years and continued the music pursuits along with working, and the next thing I know, I was married, had a son, and so the focus became more about the family and and raising my son than it did about just the music itself. Right. So, um, so why now? So why are you releasing your long awaited album CD now? I couldn't stay away. I, I love music. I miss recording. I miss singing. And I knew when the time was right, I would get a chance to go back into it. Um, had a bit of some health issues, which kind of was a kick in the tail to go now, move on it, the time just felt right, and so here I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so the name of your album is, the name of your CD is My First Love, right? Um, so tell me a little about some of the songs that are featured on it. Um, most of the material has been written by myself lyrically. Um, and most of the songs, with the exception of just maybe a couple, have to do with love, life, relationships. Um, it just wasn't the best place for me to pour my heart into. Either that or gospel. It was going to be love or gospel, one of the two. It just happened to be love um, at the time. So I talk about, in, in the song, about falling in love and about being in love, about staying in love. Um, I try really hard to stay away from the, the the angry black woman bitterness, get your stuff, get on mm -hmm. out type songs. Mm -hmm. I wanted an audience that would embrace getting involved in relationships, the good and the bad, um, and, but mostly the good. You'll hear me talk a lot about um, how it feels to be in love, those, those, those silly butterflies in your stomach kind of love feelings that you get. So it's a lot of passion and, and I and I drew from um, past, present, mm -hmm. um, what we hope love to be. Some of them are a wish or mm -hmm. better love too. Mm -hmm. um, so will we hear some of your kind of musical influences in, in these songs? I hope so. Um, I've gotten some feedback and um, some of my fans, listeners, um, make reference to uh, Faith, Faith Evans. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard some people mention Mary J. Blige. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a I have a heavy mezzo soprano, mm -hmm. but I also can sing um, falsetta in, in a very pretty way. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of weaving out of those two, out of that soulful, raspy, mm -hmm. and back into some more softer, romantic kind of lyrical sound. Mm -hmm. um, so the songs on your album are all original. For your listening party, you're going to have a couple of cover songs? Yeah, I just threw in a few for good measure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do Can't Take My Eyes Off of You by Lauryn Hill. I just mm -hmm. 
I love Lauren. I love everything about her, and so I just picked her. Mm -hmm. um, and our voices are, oh, they're similar. She's someone I've drawn from musically. Uh, I also picked a song from Floor Tree. Um, they, both of these artists, too, write a lot about love. Mm -hmm. And so it's just simple songs that just seem to fit, fit in with what I was already doing lyrically. Right. Now, Floor Tree, I believe, is a silly artist. They are, as yes. a matter of fact. Um, but now they're <laughs> not a group. But Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and you are having your release party here in Philadelphia. Exactly. Um, although you are not a native of Philadelphia, so tell me a little bit about where you're from and why you feel a connection to Philadelphia. Well, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and Cleveland has just, it, it's just a melting pot of entertainment and lots of artists, writers, and musicians that come out of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, pretty much grew up in the roots of gospel music. Um, I stayed in Cleveland the majority of my life before I um, went off to be in New York City. So I got a little bit of that Midwestern influence. Mm -hmm. um, and then being in New York, I got a little bit more familiar with the hip hop sound and mm -hmm. began to write in that area. So I'm influenced by that. Um, Philly is the closest thing to what I feel. Um, Location wise, mm -hmm. Philly, I, I live close to Philly. Mm -hmm. um, You're in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I am. Yes. I live, currently reside in Hershey, Pennsylvania, which mm -hmm. is about 90 minutes away from here. Mm -hmm. um, but when I can't, we, we often come to visit Philly. And the more I visited Philly, the more it felt like New York to me in a way, culturally and soulfully. Um, and I've learned a lot. I, I did not realize the great soul roots of Philadelphia until I started to consider doing a release party here. And so there's quite, uh, there's a wealth of history and soul music right here in Philadelphia. So it just seemed like the closest ideal place I fit in. Mm -hmm. um, so. And so what brought you here to the Arts Garage? What drew you to this piece? Um, well, uh, a young lady that has been working with me actually did the research to find a venue. And she knew that the Arts Garage was a great place to feature independent artists. So that was the initial draw. Mm -hmm. And then I came and visited, and I love the look of it, the feel of it. I've seen, um, I've been here for a few events and rehearsing for the show itself. And I just like the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of cultural things going on here at the Arts Garage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just a great venue. So tell us what we can expect on Saturday, June 2nd. I think it's 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's right. Here at the Arts Garage, this is 1533 Green mm -hmm. Avenue, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so tell us what we can expect at this um, at the party. Uh, okay. uh, sure. First, you're going to hear a little bit from James Lamar, who is actually a student at Temple. He's uh, attending the performing arts school there and so he's going to open up with a few songs and, um, I think a couple of originals and maybe a cover mm -hmm. but I've known him for some years and have worked with him musically and I thought this would be a great way um, for him to get more, even more exposure so he's a really talented young man and I'm, I'm honored to have opened up and then you're going to hear about eight songs from, from myself and um, you're gonna get groovy. You're mm -hmm. gonna sit back and mm -hmm. bob your head mm -hmm. and socialize with your friends and hopefully maybe get up and dance. I don't know if you feel like it there. There'll be a little room in the front for you to get up and dance. But mm -hmm. I hope you um, walk away feeling as though you you got a good show. Mm -hmm. You heard some good music from the artists, from the musicians, and um, you can remember you know, what your first love was like. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And there's going to be some food. And there will be food, there um, will be beverages, there'll be, a, there'll be a bar, and they mm -hmm. also have a restaurant here um, at the Arts Garage. So, I mean, you know, you can get up by your seat in the middle of the show, you know, go grab something, come on back, you know, right. it should be nice. So there'll be music in between, mm -hmm. you know, so um, it's kind of a okay. good time. Yeah, it sounds like a good time. Now, for those viewers who may not be able to make it, 
um, but they are interested in, in purchasing your music and supporting your career, how can they purchase your music and or find out more about it? Okay. My website is sangcheryl.com. That's S-A-N-G-C-H-E-R-Y-L.com. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Reverb Nation, MySpace, SoundCloud, Pure Volume. Um, you can actually get a digital download of the CD on iTunes, on CD Baby, on Amazon. If you're a subscriber to internet radios like Django, Spotify, Rhapsody, you can also uh, listen as well from there and purchase. So that's the cool thing about being a subscriber to an internet radio. You can actually just listen to the songs mm -hmm. and then decide to make a purchase. So I'm trying to, you know, just kind of spread myself cyberly uh -huh. over the internet. Right. Yeah. Now, so you have already had some success with your single. I think that's released already on the Reverse Nation. How you that so? Um, so you independently released that. Right. You had some success in your regional market. I have. I am. Um, I'm number five locally on Reverb Nation. Um, I'm getting airplay on Sundays on SolarRadio.com, which is in the UK, and I'm finding I'm I'm drawing a large. Uh, UK audience already on Daniel Radio. I got about 1,700 people following me on Reverb Nation. So I'm grateful as an independent artist to already be attracting uh, some listeners, some loyalty. Okay, well, I um, predict good things for you. Um, I look forward to being here on June 2nd. And again, I invite your, our viewers to check Cheryl out on sayingcheryl.com. Um, and um, and please uh, keep uh, a, an eye out for this recording artist and other events here at the Arts Garage. Thanks for being with us.